If you're watching this, it's too late for me, but it might not be too late for you. You might not even own any yet, and you're just interested in getting some footwear that's high quality, durable, resolable, beautiful. And you might not be yet addicted to buying boots, and that's if you save yourself, and you don't watch any of my hundreds of videos about hundreds of different boot brands, because curiosity turns to obsession so easily. I mean, these are nine reasons a boot hobby is stupid. These are all things of which I am totally guilty, or at least have been. Some of them I've come around on and I'm criticizing a little bit from a distance. But number one, nothing actually ages well or gets resold when you have a crap ton of boots. The whole benefit of boots is that they last forever and they get better every day, better fitting and better looking. The more you wear boots, you sink into the leather insole and the cork filling and the upper slowly softens and everything conforms to the shape of your individual foot, making for something that feels custom made just for your feet in a matter of months. And when you've worn them for years, you can get them resold and keep the same boots, maybe for decades. Except if you own 10 pairs of them and you're constantly changing them out and, and selling them to buy other boots you're not getting those benefits. It's, it's actually like a raw denim hobby that a lot of guys get into as well. You get excited about how well something ages, then you get seduced by another brand. Pretty soon you've got too many to wear enough to age, which like nullifies the reason they're so desirable in the first place. Like jeans and boots, there's many reasons they go together. New boots are good, but of course what you really want is them to look old and well loved, right? Like that's what you're aiming for. But I mean, there are other reasons to love boots. Like they look cool, they embody skill and artistry and craftsmanship, they're stable and they can be good for foot pain, blah, 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 blah. Fine, but when you're telling people why boots are so great, the durability and resolability is often the first thing that comes out of your mouth, even though deep down, I know it's a farce. Number two, I mean, you know, it's expensive. Everyone has different means and values and certain income brackets, the price becomes negligible, but still there are not many good boots for under 300 bucks. And when you're a real big boot nerd, pretty soon you won't settle for anything under 500 bucks. There are plenty of good boots for less, don't get me wrong. But when you get really into this stuff, pretty soon it's like Pacific Northwest or, or, or British made or Indonesian made or Japanese made or bust. That said, the great thing about this space is that people are buying and selling used boots all the time. You can go to the Goodyear Welt subreddit or Grailed or eBay and you'll find guys who understand that a used $600 boot is totally worth $400 and then you can buy the next boot and how much money have you really lost? $200? I mean, that's a lot of money. Unless your next boot is also used. Yes, I am talking myself out of this video as I'm making it. Number three, you feel guilty whenever you wear trousers and you're not wearing boots. Like if it's long pants weather, you have to be wearing in your boots, even if sneakers are quicker to put on and even if they might match that outfit a little bit better. Speaking of which, number four, are boots really more comfortable than sneakers? Really? You ever wear boots for months and then you go out in sneakers and you're like amazed at how light and flexible and squishy they are? I mean, don't get me wrong, I know the stability and the footbed and everything in boots are, are superior and the crosshatch is higher, but it is funny, on the occasion I put sneakers on, it's like, oh damn, yeah, like this, I forgot what normal people experience with their shoes. On that note, number five, in the boot world, a lot of people don't know what comfort is. At least they have different meanings of comfort. Like, there are so many people who will swear up and down that nothing in the world is more comfortable than say a two or three pound NYX boot because it's got so much leather in the sole, it takes so long to soften, but when it softens up, it feels so great and custom made for your foot and everything. And you get a lot of guys that will crap on boots with like say a pour on insole and thinner leather like, like Thursday or uh, some Red Wing boots or a bunch of other boots. They'll just say that's, it, that's terrible and it's not actually that comfortable and it's not really worth it. And like, they just forget that if I'm talking to the average person on the street, the average guy who is not like just deeply steep in this whole world, and I tell him, look, here are some boots. Like, let's say he's looking at some Thursday boots and they're 200 bucks. And a lot of these guys will say, no, 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 don't get those boots. You gotta get these six, $700 Knicks boots. They're gonna take three, six months to make them for you. They're gonna be horribly uncomfortable for the first like several months, but then they're gonna feel pretty good. Like the, the average person is just gonna look at you like you're a crazy person. Like that's not how most people experience comfort. I get the whole custom made feeling is nice, but for a lot of people, comfort is something that's 
soft underfoot and not a pain to break in and has decent shock absorption, right? Different people have different values, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's okay, some people just value different things from their boots and a lot of people really quickly forget that. I think because they're spending so much money on it, they have to convince themselves that what they're doing is like the absolute best thing to do for your feet. It's like a, it's like a psychological thing, you know? Number six, uh, you overthink everything about boot care. I've been as bad at this as anyone, but boots are supposed to endure everything you throw at them. You don't need to condition them every week, which I've seen brands tell their poor customers to do. Sutro told me to condition their boots at least once a month. So does RM Williams, uh, these ones here. I have guys who write for my website who brush down their boots every time they wear them and like writers, I love you. And, and I get that dirt speeds up leather degradation technically and they shouldn't be left unclean for six months when you're not wearing them in summer. And yes, a leather should be conditioned, but like, if you're just wearing them casually, you're fine conditioning like once a year, maybe twice, you know? B brushing every day and conditioning every other week are things a lot of people I know do. You're just giving yourself a second job, man. Like, I I've given my boots to friends who wear them for years without caring for them and they, they don't even notice. They're not boot guys, to be fair, but they, they don't notice and the boots, they're lasting, you know? Like, your boots should be fine. You should use shoe trees, though. Number seven, a lot of terminology is not agreed upon. Like, a lot of facts aren't agreed upon. Like, what is top grain leather? Like I've spoken to leather workers and tannery managers who disagree as to what that means. What's chamois leather? It's supposed to come from a European goat antelope, but hauling leather companies sell chamois or chamois that is just like specially finished cowhide, you know, and no one gets mad at them about it. Some people do that for bison as well. What's handmade or handcrafted? Like every boot says they're handmade. Carmina says that theirs are handcrafted, but look at all this machinery for lasting and leather cutting I saw at their factory, it's space age stuff. What's rough out leather? It's supposed to be full grain leather flipped inside out, but half the time it's actually suede, or suede is getting called rough out. What is a work boot? Is it a $380 Italian vegetable tan mock toe from Grant Stone? Like is that what construction workers are wearing? And here's another one. What does made in America mean? This is a topic for a whole other video, but there's made in the USA with imported materials, made in USA with imported parts, assembled in USA with imported components. Like you are meant to like legally differentiate between all these, but a lot of people and boot brands use made in America pretty loosely for boots that only have the soles put on in America and the rest are made in the Dominican Republic. That's right, I said Dominican Republic. If you're one of those multiple boot brands that do that, now you know that I know brands I won't name because I don't want to be sued by you. But one day, one day I'm going to expose the brands that do that. You'll see a lot of them do that. Dominican Republic's one of them. But uh, On that note, number eight, it gets political very easily, this whole space. There's a strong undercurrent of fragile masculinity and fragile nationalism coursing through these spaces of like heritage American footwear. Like even if like a Chinese made boot like Grant Stone is made as well as an American boot with the exact same materials, well, if you, have, if you buy it, you're supporting slave labor in China, even though like an unskilled workers like can't make boots that good. Like, and if it's made in Mexico, it must be bad, even though brands like, like unmarked are making like Viberg quality boots and Chisos might be like the best cowboy boot there is. And they're both made in Leon in Mexico. Like skill doesn't have a nationality, right? And then there's my favorite, the guys who are real macho tough men, but get very upset by the notion of anybody wearing boots if they're not manual laborers. Like they see, Anyone white collar enjoying the real universal benefits of ankle support uh, and stability as an attack on the working class. Like I just got this one as I was writing this script, boots are for working folks. And this one in the best Red Wings video, four of the softest dudes ever talking about tough boots. I bet all four are Democrats. Like guys, like b boots last forever and can reduce foot pain for anyone. They're good purchases for anyone. Anyway, if you wanna see me yelling in more mean YouTube comments, uh, check out this video up there. It's in the description below if that card doesn't work. And lastly, number nine, the nerds that permeate this space with obsessive gatekeeping buffoonery over nothing problems. You get into this hobby of admiring nicely made footwear and really quickly, you encounter the most venomous keyboard warrior dorks who will call you the worst names on earth or people will flip their if Red Wing releases a new boot not updating their classic models or anything, but like this boot with some foam on the insole to help the break in. Suddenly everyone will scream that they've sold out and this is an apocalypse and they're abandoning their roots and betraying their customers. Like it's just like a one-off model, right? To, to help break in. Or they get like a good boot with good materials and it'll arrive at their door and they'll open the shoebox with the goal of finding something to complain about. Like this is what the Goodyear Welt Stock Reddit is all about. A lot of it is. Like they, people want handmade footwear, but if there's any evidence a person made it, like imperfections, like if there's one stitch out of place and they send it back and it doesn't make any sense. Like no, nothing is materially affected by that. And ever since I made my own boots, I actually love 
seeing wonky stitches because like it means a, a person made them, you know, and people are imperfect. That's like the beauty of handmade stuff. People just lose all sense of perspective at a certain level. And I understand guys wanting perfection if they're spending this money or they want their boots to embody the highest level of artistry possible. But unrealistic and above all purely cosmetic standards are killing the boot industry that they love. I'm pretty tight with Vince who runs Trim and Boot Company actually and he's he specifically asked the moderators of the Goodyear Welt subreddit to be taken off their boot buying guide because like he just has no patience for this kind of obsessive, so these kinds of obsessive customers who find faults with everything. And like, I get it, you know? And you don't wanna wind up like those guys. Like, you don't wanna be a guy pouring over boots with a magnifying glass to find something to scream about on the internet. And you don't wanna bankrupt your family over another John Lofgren purchase. You don't wanna be responsible for boots that are made to be worn for years, barely getting a scratch on them because they've been babied so much and worn so little. Guys, don't wind up like me. Collect baseball cards instead.